Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy. Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Galaxy S3 Mini. So when you first start this up, it will just say get started, so pretty uh, ready and easy to go. Then you're going to start by connecting to a internet connection. Now you always want to connect to a Wi-Fi connection when you first start up your phone, this way it'll back up any existing uh, data you've had from previous phones. So I'm going to send on to our Wi-Fi right here. And now it's connecting. And now we have a connection. So once you're connected, just go next. And I will zoom in for you guys. So it's a little bit easier to see. And then you want to sign into your Gmail account. The reason for this is um, this is how you do everything on Android. You have to have a Gmail account. If you don't have one, create one. And it will have a create Google account section right there. And just create one. But this backs up everything from your email to your contacts, calendar, and it's how you download apps. So you do need a Gmail account for this device. And I will be entering mine in now. And once it verifies your account, it will prompt you to sync. So, as we can see right here, I have my email address and then I can go and sync up other accounts like Exchange, Hotmail, and other uh, types of emails there. So, once you go next, then you restore and import any contacts or anything like that that you've had from your email address. And there we go. So right now it's syncing up my Gmail account and it will import all the rest to. This will also sync up any uh, past Wi-Fi's you've had using that Gmail account, which is again nice. And then when you go to next, um, you can set up AT&T Locker if you store your music or if you store your photos and music that way. I store it through Google, uh, which I like much better. Google Plus for photos to back up all your photos and then Google Music for all of your music needs. And then you're just gonna go next. And you sign into a Samsung account if you have one. I do have one, so I will be signing into that. Now a Samsung account is for a couple of different things. One, to access your computer at home using Samsung Link, which is this icon. Chat on, which is like an instant messenger uh, between all devices. Um, it's both on iOS, Android, Blackberry, and Windows. Samsung apps, which are just a little bit exclusive apps, and Find My Device, which is something, a service that Samsung provides if you have their account. So sign in if you want to, or create one. This one you don't have to do, but I just recommend you do it, so I'll show you the process once uh, you do. I must admit, it's a little bit harder for me to type on a smaller keyboard after having a bigger keyboard for so long. And then once you sign in, It'll ask you what features you want to enable. SBeam allows you to tap a Samsung device uh, back to back, which uh, will allow you to send data such as 
music, songs, uh, or sorry, not songs, music, videos, any kind of web pages, anything such as that, it'll allow you to do. Um, it is signing into my Samsung account now, so I'll explain the others on um, behind it on the meantime. Voice control. Voice control is most useful uh, with two instances, one being the camera. You can say capture, cheese, smile, and shoot to take a photo instead of tapping the uh, screen. Just makes it a little bit easier and more accurate. The other type of voice control that's useful is when someone calls. You can actually say answer or reject and you'll be able to accept or decline the call that way. Easy mode can be very useful for first time smartphone users. If this is your first time smartphone, then I do suggest you use easy mode. It's a very easy process that allows you to um, come, if you come from a feature phone, it simply lays out um, how the display is uh, very simple and uh, much easier to use than regular Android is. So if you're kind of interested in this device but you weren't sure if it's really for you, I recommend going on easy mode first. It's just a lot more um, easy for a first time smartphone user. And as this finishes up, we'll just go over the uh, specific layouts on your phone. So you do have the power button right here on the right uh, side. On the bottom over here, you have the home button, back button, and menu button. These are three buttons, and when you tap one of them, it'll light up for about six seconds, and then it'll go off. You do have the volume rocker right here, so this is how you can turn up your music, uh, also your ringer, and just the sounds on the phone. So media will be your music, notifications will be like a pop-up um, notification when you get like an email and the ringer itself. And on the back end over here we have your speaker, camera, and flash. And should be finishing up shortly. And there we are. And I will put voice control on. Smart stays as long as you're looking at it. Uh, these two sensors help uh, basically determine when you're not looking at it so it'll shut off uh, the screen when you don't need it. And then we'll go finish. And this will be what your phone looks like. So very simple, very easy. I do also wanna show you, so this is regular Android, all of your screens right here. All of your apps are in the app drawer. They should be in alphabetical order as well to make it nice and easy for you. However, if this seems too intimidating for you, the easy mode we could have selected is still available. So I'm going to be switching it to that just so you can see what it would have looked like. And here is your easy mode. A lot simpler interface, but your nine favorite contacts right here. You still have all your contacts over here though, don't worry. And nine apps that um, you or someone for you can edit and select which ones you don't want and then add which ones you do. However, all of your apps will be right here for simple and easy usage. If you have any other questions on how to use this device, please feel free to ask. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy.